In today's video, I'm going to talk about two positions that came up while playing online recently, and I want to highlight and talk through these two positions as they are highly instructional and hearing the thought process while analyzing them may prove helpful in your games. I think it's important to study checkers problems as they can improve your overall vision and understanding of tactical and strategic concepts. As I mentioned in a previous video, evaluating checkers positions can be extremely difficult. Let's bring up this first position. I'm going to show a bird's eye view as well so you can take note and even bring it up on your own board. The first thing I do when evaluating a position is count the number of pieces for both sides. It sounds really simple, but it's really important to do. So in this position, we can see red has four pieces and white has four pieces. Next, I assess the value of the position. Here, both sides have two kings, so there is no king majority, but the red kings have more freedom and the white kings are underdeveloped because of the red bridge. White also has a liability with the piece on 10 and also on 12. After taking all of this in consideration, it's fair to assess that red probably has some kind of advantage here and it's white that has to work to obtain the draw. Now that we've come to that conclusion, it's time to figure out how we can draw this from white. In doing this, it's important to consider every single move on the board no matter how ridiculous A may look in the first place. So, as we're considering each piece on the board with white to play, let's do that. So first, let's take a look at this. What if white goes here? Well, if white goes here, red is just going to capture, and sure, white can move in for another king, but it's going to be four pieces versus three, and red is going to win that game. So we know that this can't do that. If we move this white king, this may draw, but red is just going to bear down and we want to obtain this draw in as fast of a manner as possible. So developing here, again, it may work, but the red king is just going to continue to encroach white's position. And white will be wasting time by just going back to the king row it may still draw, but again, the red king is just going to bear down in the position. Let's take a look at this king. Well, this king is under the bridge and not in very good position at all. If it goes either to this square or this square, the red king is just going to pin a piece here and more or less trap this piece. And then, say, if white goes here, then red can just get into this square and it's likely going to be a win. So moving this king here is no good. Same with here. We have the same sort of position. It's just not very good at all and we'll probably lose for white. Okay, so we've done a very quick assessment. We know this will lose instantly. These moves may draw, but it's kind of wasting time. Moving the king out here is no good because of pinning the piece here. So we're just really down to one piece left, and that's moving this piece, but all it can do is just move to be captured. If white moves here, all right, so the red piece is going to capture this piece now, and maybe something can happen here, maybe, because we can see now a sort of press, but if red goes here, and white presses again, it's just going to move to safety, and it's, once again, winning for red. But we're maybe onto something here with this press. What if the piece is pressed this way, so moves 10 to 6 and allows this jump? Maybe we have something here. Because now, with this press, if red goes onto this square, we have a 2 for 1. And now it's white that has completely turned the tables and can win this game. I'll show how it can win this game, but let's talk about the other alternative after this press, and maybe red goes 10 to 15. 
white can then press again safely. Again, there's no defense right now with this piece. So maybe red goes there, and now white can get between the two, threatening a two for one here. And really, this is, we found the draw. We found the draw by looking at every single consideration on the board. And really, that is what has to be done in these late game positions. We can finish off the draw again. There's a number of different paths here. One of them is really if red goes 3-7 next, that can draw. Or we can just continue to advance the piece. And there we go, 3-on-3 three three with a good drawing move here. But let's go back to why that 10-14 move is no good. So we know this is the drawing sequence now after playing all that out. But let's say 10-15 is not played and instead 10-14. Now we have this 2 for 1. And now this piece is in severe danger. If the Red King tries to protect it, it can't go here because you have the breaches, which will lose a piece. So Fred goes here. White is going to advance to get a king. And then at this point, if the Red King retreats, then White is just going to capture this piece and if it tries to advance, we have this situation. Doesn't matter which capture. Let's say the capture takes place with the king. And now the timing is just right for white to secure the win. Let's assess this second position. Once again, I'm going to bring up the bird's eye view so you can all take a look. So when assessing it, we see it's four pieces for red and four pieces for white. Each side has a king, but here we can evaluate pretty quickly that white is in serious trouble. And why is white in serious trouble? Well, we can see here that the piece on 22 is in trouble because you have pieces on both 15 and 13 for red, and the king on 21, priming to attack that piece right away. So white is extremely underdeveloped here. Yes, it does have a king, but right now that piece on 22 is in big, big trouble. So we have to assess, well, how can we get that piece to safety? We have some leverage here because with the piece on 6, it's starting to threaten this piece on 15. But because this piece is also on 14, if the red tries to press, then that piece may get captured as well. So let's go back and let's take a look at each piece individually. With white to move, if it tries to move the piece on 22 in any capacity, whether 22-18 or 22-17, it's just going to get captured, and it's going to be four against three, and red is going to win. If we take a look at the piece on 14, 14 9 may look reasonable because now white can press, but guess what? Red is just going to press back and still be up a piece. So that is no good either. And if 14 10, once again, the Red King is just going to capture this piece on 22, and will go up a piece. The White King is played here. Once again, Red can actually take both these two pieces, so really bad for White. And same here, if it retreats to this square, or even if it retreats back to the King row, the piece on 22 is going to get captured. So. We're running out of options here, and white may be in really, really big trouble. Well, let's take a look at this piece. 
this piece is about to enter the king row, and maybe it does. All right, let's say it moves here. What we're doing here is we're enacting a patience strategy, letting red take the mantle here. So if red decides, all right, it's just going to retreat to get another king, then white is going to have free reign to go in. So it's going to be an easy draw. If red presses this way, threatening both these pieces, the white king can actually go here, red capturing on this square, white capturing in this square, and we're back to being even again. But what if the red king goes here? This is the feared move, because now if white tries to press this piece, red is going to get a double jump and be a piece ahead and win the game. So that can no longer work. If white tries to retreat here, or even here, it's just going to be, once again, a free piece that red is going to capture. So what now? Well, there is one other saving grace here. If white goes 20 to 17, now this capture must take place, and now white can press. Because now, if the red piece goes 15, 19, or even 15, 18, you have the double jump now for white. So we're back to being even. And if red just decides to retreat with the king back or go toward to get another king, once again, white is going to capture this piece and we're back to being even. But let's say red does go 15, 19. We have the double jump. And again, an even game with two on two. So this is why it's really important to evaluate every single potential move on the board, especially when you get into these late game positions. As I mentioned, both of these positions came from actual games online played against a very good friend of the channel named Jordan, who goes by the online alias Dog Boston. Jordan, thank you very much for these games. It's always a pleasure to compete against you. What I would say, too, is go back and rewatch this video and really soak in these ideas and these positions. The idea to look at every single move at your disposal on the board, and in doing so, applying them to your own games is really going to help you out going forward. Thanks as always, for watching.